It is time to complete our final 2020 NHL mock draft. The draft itself is only a short time away, and today we're going to go through all the first 31 selections of the first round. So stay tuned, what's coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we're doing our final mock draft for the 2020 NHL Draft, which is really close to taking place here for real. So, of course, it won't be long. We'll be doing a recap and talk about what actually went down. And we can see how close some of my selections were to what actually ended up playing out. So we're going to get started here with picks number one. Work our way all the way down to 31. Of course, I'd love to know what your feedback and comments are down in the comment section. So make sure you let me know what players you think will be selected by these teams. And we'll discuss further. With the first overall selection, the New York Rangers proudly select Alexi Lafreniere. Now, of course, Lafreniere, no surprise here, going number one. He's definitely going to be drafted by the Rangers. They will not be trading this pick. There's no way they're going to do that unless they're absolutely overwhelmed with a, an, an astounding uh, haul of prospects and picks here, which I just don't see happening. But Lafreniere, as we all know, is going to be the dominant player at the NHL level who will be a, a franchise-altering player. It's going to be a major, major addition for the Rangers. Selecting second overall, we have the Los Angeles Kings, and I have them taking Tim Stutzla out of Germany. Stutzla's had a phenomenal season, uh, really rising up the ranks here. Uh, he draws comparison to Patrick Kane. He can play center, he can play wing, and I really feel he is the best option for the Kings, and that's who they're going to select. Uh, I think like he's a dynamic player with a tremendous upside and will fit perfectly into the Kings' prospect system. Third overall, we have the Ottawa Senators with the pick they received from the San Jose Sharks, and I have them taking the big center iceman from Sudbury, Quinton Byfield. This is probably one of the easier selections of the draft. Basically, they're going to take the player who the uh, Kings and the Rangers do not. These three top guys are definitely kind of in a class on their own. You have Lafreniere in the top class. You get Stutzla and Byfield are a little bit more similarly ranked, and then after that, there is a bit of a difference here. So Byfield will be that big top center iceman that the Senators badly need in their system. Fourth overall, we have the Detroit Red Wings, and I have Steve Eiserman, the GM, selecting top defenseman Jamie Drysdale. Now, he's got a lot of great options here at this pick. You can go with a center iceman, you can go with a winger, you can go with a defenseman, and I feel Drysdale is going to be the selection for the Wings. They're going to build this team from the back end out. They got Sider last year as a pretty high first-round pick. He's looking pretty solid. Uh, so, obviously, I think that's the way the Red Wings are going to build this team, and having another top-pairing guy like Drysdale on the team along with Sider will really help solidify the Red Wings blue line for many years to come. At fifth overall, we have the Senators picking again. I have them taking one of the top wingers in the draft, Lucas Raymond out of Sweden. Raymond is one of the most underrated guys, I think. He doesn't get enough love going much lower in many uh, mock drafts. Raymond is a tremendous offensively skilled winger who's really tough to play against, good in all zones, and is a different kind of player that the Senators don't have. I really see them to the benefit here of them taking two top solid forwards. They have a lot of pretty good young D on their team already. They have a lot of goaltenders. To me, this makes the most sense for the Senators with a number five pick. At number six, we have the Anaheim Ducks selecting, and I have them taking another top center of the draft, Cole Perfetti, who's arguably one of the smartest players in this draft. His foot speed might be a little bit slow. He's a good skater, but could certainly work on getting a little bit faster, a little bit more explosive. Uh, overall, Perfetti is, like I said, a tremendously gifted uh, shoot-first type of center iceman, a really, really smart player, and I see him fitting in to be a top six center iceman for the Ducks for many years to come. Picking at number seven, we have the New Jersey Devils, and I have them selecting one of the top defensemen in the draft, Jake Sanderson. Now, Jake Sanderson is likely going to be a year or two get into the NHL. I believe he intends to play college hockey here, so it could be a little bit of a wait, but worth the wait for the Devils. They could certainly use some youth on their blue line. They have some great dynamic young forwards already in the mix. They have a decent young goaltender with Mackenzie Blackwood, so I see them going for Sanderson here to try to really shore up that blue line for the future. Picking at number 8, we have the Buffalo Sabres, and I have them taking Austrian-born center iceman of the Ottawa 67s, Marco Rossi, who was one of the top players in Major Junior Hockey last year, one of the more complete centers in the NHL draft this year as well. He may not be overly big at 5'9", 179, but he certainly plays 
a much bigger game than his size and stature uh, indicated just by looking at the statistics here. But Rossi could easily be that top dynamic center that the Sabres are missing here. Of course, they have Jack Eichel. They have a guy like Dylan Cousins in their system as well, who, you know, hard to say if he'll be a center or a winger. They have Casey Middlestad, who they've been a little bit slow to develop here. So clearly Rossi could be that insurance piece. So throw him in with Eichel and Cousins, and that gives him a group of dynamic players who can play down the middle for the Sabres for a long, long time. Acting ninth overall, we have the Minnesota Wild, and we have them taking finish Bourne's left shot center, Anton Lundell. Now, Lundell should be a terrific fit here for the Minnesota Wild, who desperately need top six center iceman. He's got a terrific wrist shot. He's really good at being in position at all times, creating time and space for himself. Good in all zones, works hard, and can certainly translate to being a top six center iceman at the NHL level. Selecting 10th overall, we have the Winnipeg Jets, and we have them taking one of the top scorers in the draft, Jack Quinn of the Ottawa 67s, who could very well turn out to be the top pure goal scorer in this draft. It's certainly a possibility. He's put up terrific numbers in the 67s, and that's without always getting consistent power play time on the top unit. Uh, has not really had a chance to play much with Marco Rossi, so you can't look at the stats and kind of assume that. So obviously Quinn is a terrific goal scorer. He's got a really wicked shot, and he can get his shot off in a variety of positions and ways. He's very deceptive, hard to read, and if they do end up trading a guy like Patrick Lina here in the near future, which is heavily rumored, he could be that next top goal scoring winger to come on and, and replace him here down the road or act as a complimentary piece if Lonnie sticks around. Either way, it gives the Jets another sniper in their top six for the future. In 11th overall, we have the Nashville Predators who's going to go out on a limb here and take the top goalie in the draft, Russian-born goalie Yaroslav Askarov, who apparently is the top goaltending prospect really since Carey Price, according to most of the experts here. I mean, I've seen him play. He's been a tremendous goaltender to watch. Didn't have a great showing at the World Juniors, though, and that certainly has hurt his value a little bit. Might have some teams a little nervous taking him too high. But with this selection here at 11 overall, the Predators are in a situation where they have Pecorine getting older. They have a great opportunity here to take the goaltender to the future, and I don't think they're going to pass that up. Selecting 12th overall, we have the Florida Panthers, and they're going to view this as a gift, selecting Swedish-born sniper Alexander Holtz. Now, the Panthers are probably going into this pick thinking he's likely not going to be available and had some other players that they'd be willing to select here, but with everything I have slotted up in this draft, I can see Holtz sliding a little bit, but he's got a terrific shot between him and Jack Quinn. Very well could be the best shot, most best pure goal scorer in the draft. But he's, uh, he's a threat to score in the offensive zone, uh, a pure sniper, and be a great fit in Florida here in the long term. Selecting 13th overall is the Carolina Hurricanes with the pick they received from the Toronto Maple Leafs. They are going to select Dawson Mercer from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Mercer's had a really solid junior career with Shakutami here so far. He's a pretty solid offensive forward, very deceptive, and I can see him being yet another Great player for the Hurricanes here. They have a lot of young forwards in their system already, but they are also loaded with a lot of D as well. So the Hurricanes are in a position here where they can kind of take whoever they feel is the best overall all-around player with this draft pick now. And I can see Dawson Mercer being a great fit for what they're looking for. Selecting 14th overall, we have the Edmonton Oilers, and I have them selecting a top winger from the Western Hockey League's Portland Winterhawks, Seth Jarvis. Now, Jarvis is a player of the Oilers, but I had an easy time seeing, considering how close he plays to where they are. Uh, he's a type of player. He might be on the smaller side, but that's obviously not something that the Oilers are afraid of. Obviously, we saw them select Kaylor Yamamoto not long ago, and he's worked out quite nicely for them here so far. But he's a terrific stick handler, can really good in tight spaces, uh, one of the best attackers in this draft. Uh, certainly good at stopping, starting, changing gears, uh, good passer, good shooter, just a really overall solid offensive winger. And I can see him being a great fit here with the Oilers offense for a long time. Selecting 15th overall, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs. I have them taking one of the top defensive and physical defensemen in this draft. Braden Schneider coming at you from the Western Hockey League here, playing with the Brandon Wheat Kings. Schneider is a big guy. He's already 6'2", 209 pounds. He's bound to get even a little bit bigger as he finishes developing. Uh, but he's a big guy, uh, certainly not afraid of the physical play. Really big and strong, and he certainly plays uh, to his strengths with that. Certainly the type of defenseman that the Leafs could use. Uh, obviously, they have a guy like Jake Muzzin, who's that physical defender right now, and they need more of that on that back end. And he fits perfectly with the Leafs are missing right now in their system. Selecting 16th overall, we have the Montreal Canadiens. We have them taking a center from the Western Hockey League's Kamloops Blazers, 
Connor Zary. Now, at this point in the draft, Zary's going to be one of the better players available. He's a left shot center, 6 feet tall, 180 pounds. He's got a terrific shot, very deceptive triggerman, uh, was really good at his receiving and giving passes, so he can certainly help a lot on the offensive zone. Probably projects probably be more like a middle six center right spin longer term, uh, which I know the Habs have a couple of other good young centers in the system, but not all centers turn out to play center to NHL level. Uh, so I just think in their uh, selection here that they have to take one of the top players available and Zary would fit in nicely with their offensive game. Selecting 17th overall, we have the Chicago Blackhawks and we have them taking Russian born left winger Rodion Amirov. Now, Amirov is the kind of player who has a lot of offensive ability, certainly projects to be a really good uh, top six uh, offensive winger at the NHL level. Uh, he does a lot of things really well. His anticipation, though, is probably one of his stronger skills where he can kind of see the play as it develops ahead. His hockey IQ is really strong, uh, which is going to allow him uh, to be a really solid goal scorer at the NHL level. And I just see him fitting in nicely with the other Chicago Blackhawks prospects. We've seen them take a lot of defensemen here in the last few years. They're well-stocked on that end. Uh, and at this point, they're going to go with a forward, considering what's available. And Amirov is certainly one of the stronger offensive threats still on the board. 18th overall, we have the New Jersey Devils. We have another German-born forward being selected here with left winger Lucas Reichel. And of course, his uncle Robert Reichel was a longtime NHLer, had a pretty solid career. Uh, his father also played hockey but decided to stay over in Germany to play. Uh, he's six feet tall, 172, uh, left shot, relentless forechecker and back checker, works extremely hard on the ice in all zones, wins many battles, which allows him to get many offensive opportunities. Great puck handler, uh, you know, certainly uh, very deceptive when it comes to entering the zone against the defense. So certainly another top six potential winger here at the NHL level. Selecting 19th overall, we have the Calgary Flames. And I have them selecting Calgary, Alberta native Dylan Holloway of the University of Wisconsin. Pretty good size center iceman, six foot one. 203 pounds. He can also play the wing. Not sure exactly what he's going to project to be at the NHL level just yet, but looking like he very well could be a center iceman. Uh, really works hard in all zones. Uh, never leaves his zone early, so he's always there to defend well. A uh, good east-west attacker. Protects the puck well as well. And Holloway certainly didn't have a great year at University of Wisconsin. Overall, the team wasn't overly great. Hopefully this year they can get back on the ice and kind of have some better results there. But Holloway still has a lot of potential would be a player that the Flames will have to wait a little while for as he plays college hockey, but I think it'll be well worth the wait, and it should project to be a middle six center for them down the road. Selecting 20th overall, we have the New Jersey Devils with yet another selection, taking Jacob Perot. Obviously, Jacob Perot is the son of former NHL player Yannick Perot, playing in the OHL for the Sarnia Sting. He's had a pretty solid junior career thus far. Uh, he is a pure sniper. He's a guy who can play on the right wing. He's really quick. Much faster than his father ever was. His father was known as more of a defensive specialist who wasn't overly fast. But uh, Yannick has uh, certainly produced himself a much faster son here in Jacob. I mean, Jacob put up 70 points last year in the OHL, scoring 39 goals. And that's only going to continue to get better here. He's really good on the rush, good on the, on the uh, offensive zone to get that shot off and get many opportunities here. So Jacob Perot should project quite nicely in New Jersey system playing alongside some top centers possibly down the road like Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer. Selecting 21st overall, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I have them taking Swedish winger Noel Gunler. Now, the Blue Jackets are a team who need help in an offensive way with their forward group, and he will fit in quite nicely. He can play either wing. He's six foot two, 174 pounds, and he's only going to fill out, add a little bit more muscle to that frame. Uh, he's a right shot, so primarily a right winger, but Guler's the type of player uh, who can create a lot of offense uh, on the rush. He's got a great shot. He can carry the puck well and I think would be a great help to the Columbus Blue Jackets right now who are more of a defensive team with good goaltending. I'm not sure how quickly he can make it to the NHL, but the Swedish winger will be a huge help to the future of the Blue Jackets. Selecting 22nd overall which is the New York Rangers who have a selection here from the Carolina Hurricanes and I have them taking forward Hendrix Lapierre from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Now, Lapierre is a player who, for the most part, was projecting to be much higher, but certainly uh, due to his injuries uh, and concussion issues that he's uh, gone through, certainly scared off a few teams. But a team like the Rangers, 
I think are a perfect team to take the risk because he could be well worth it if things work out and he lives up to his potential. Uh, the Rangers are a team really deep in prospects, have a lot of selections here, and they can take the chance if this one doesn't quite work out. But he's got terrific puck skills, high-end talent. It's just the injuries that have kind of held him back here. Uh, so I think the Rangers would be a great spot to take the chance here on this young player. Selecting 23rd overall, we have the Philadelphia Flyers, and I have them taking another French-born forward from the QMJHL, Maverick Bork. Now, Bork plays his junior hockey in Shewinigan with the Cataracts. He's about 5'11", 185. Uh, a really, really smart hockey player. Maverick Bork is definitely one of the smarter forwards in the first-round selections here. Uh, hockey IQ is unreal. Makes plays that nobody else can see, so he anticipates the play. Sees a few plays ahead, which is really not something you can teach. That's a natural given talent. Uh, he's really good at being deceptive here with the defense as well, and I think could be a terrific uh, addition here to the Flyers' deep group of prospect forwards. All Selecting 24th overall, we have the Washington Capitals. We have them taking a Western Hockey League defenseman, Caden Gooley, the Prince Albert Raiders, who's got great size at six foot three, 187 pounds. Originally born in Sherwood Park, Alberta. Uh, he's a pretty solid uh, defenseman at both ends of the ice. Uh, he's really solid in his own end. He's really good on the offensive side when it comes to jumping late into the rush, creating turnovers, uh, and kind of helping the team out in that way. I mean, he's not going to put up like huge numbers offensively, but he did have a 40-point season in 64 games last year with Prince Albert while being solid in his own end. Next up at number 25 overall, we have the Colorado Avalanche. We have them selecting the third German player in the first round, John Jason Paterka, who's a left winger, 5'11", 192, very, very talented forward. He's got a motor that just always goes. He works incredibly hard on every shift. He's always hard on every puck, board battles. He's not played, afraid of the physical stuff. Real hard player to play against, uh, which is something that his opponents often talk about uh, the second and third efforts is to never give up in that turn around and get an offensive opportunity is something that he's extremely good at. I certainly see him projecting to be a solid middle six winger. It would fit in nicely with the young group of avalanche forwards that are leading this team right now. Selecting 26 overall, we have the St. Louis Blues and they will be selecting Czech Republic forward Jan Misak, who's a center as well as a winger, six feet tall, around 180 pounds. Overall, pretty solid, well-rounded forward. Uh, he certainly makes the most of his offensive zone attacks as a four-checker as well, creating a lot of turnovers, which will lead to offense. Anticipates the, the play very well, a really smart player. He's a north-south attacker that often attacks in a straight line, but certainly pretty solid at putting up some pretty good offensive numbers. Likely projects to be more of a middle six type forward at the NHL level. Selecting 27th overall, we have the Anaheim Ducks and the pick they received from the Boston Bruins in a trade earlier. We have them selecting, taking Brendan Brisson, son of top NHL agent Pat Brisson, who was obviously born in the U.S. where his father has been working but has dual citizenship. Uh, Brisson is a terrific hockey player, uh, hard worker, great skater, uh, certainly the kind of player uh, who is really solid at reading the defense here. Uh, obviously, Brisson is the kind of player is referred to as the best problem-solving forward in the draft besides Alexi Lafreniere. So he's really good at reading the defense and getting himself out of a jam here and get the team and puck to a teammate, get the shot on net or what have you. But Brisson should be a pretty solid NHL forward. Selecting 28th overall, we have the Ottawa Senators with the pick they received from the New York Islanders for J.G. Pajo. And I have them selecting a winger from the Edmonton Oil Kings, Jake Neighbors. Now, Jake Neighbors is a type of player who's pretty good size, 5'11", 200 pounds. He's built like a brick wall. Uh, certainly a terrific playmaking type of winger. Uh, not afraid of the physical play. Pretty solid defensively as well. Uh, so you're going to get a really big, strong winger who is primarily a good at playmaking and setting up his, his teammates for uh, offensive opportunity. So pretty hard to pass up a player like this this late in the first round. Selecting 29th overall, we have the Vegas Golden Knights, and we have them taking another center from the OHLs, Barry Colts, Tyson Forster. Now, he is a shoot-first type of center riceman with decent size, 6'1", 194 pounds. Normally, it sets up shop at the top of the left face-up circle, getting ready for that big one-timer as one of the better shots in the draft, certainly one of the top three or four players in the first round here, especially uh, that has a wicked shot. Uh, but he's also pretty solid on the defensive side of the game as well. So he's a dual threat center iceman who would fit nicely longer term here with Vegas. 
where they don't have a super deep prospect pool built up here just yet. Next up at 30th overall, we have the runners-up in the Stanley Cup Finals here, the Dallas Stars. And I have them selecting Ty Smilanek uh, from the United States National Team Development Program. A left-shot center, 6'1", 179, originally born in Denver, Colorado. He's a pretty solid two-way center who anticipates to play pretty well on both ends of the ice. Pretty solid, a pretty smart player overall. He's got good size that he uses to his advantage to, uh, to win a lot of defensive battles as well. So Smilenix is going to be going to Quinnipiac University, so he'll certainly be uh, at least a couple of years joining the uh, the NHL ranks here. So he'll have an opportunity to kind of craft his game while he works on becoming more mature two-way center that will hopefully be an impact player for the Dallas Stars down the road. Selecting 31st overall, we have the Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning, and I have them selecting Ridley Gray from the Western Hockey League's Brandon Wheat Kings, who's a left winger, 5'11", 159, so we certainly could use uh, some more muscle here on that frame, but Greg is a, a really kind of energetic player, seems like he never gets tired, always working hard in all three zones, he's always involved, always a part of it, always in the mix, and he's not afraid to play a physical game as well, especially considering that he's not an overly big player, uh, but he's really smart defensively, uh, he attacks with a lot of pace, great passer, and really could turn out to be a potential steal here in the late first round. So those are my 31 selections for the first round of the 2020 NHL Draft. Of course, as I mentioned before, let me know your comments and feedback on these selections in the comment section, and we can discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And stay tuned for plenty of draft recap action as the draft itself is so close to taking place. We'll discuss what actually went down here in the coming days. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.